the tool space is a palette unique to Civil 3D that can contain up to four tabs. Each tab uses a hierarchical tree interface to manage dynamic objects, settings, styles, and commands. The tool space is an interactive data management tool. Within the tool space, you can find information about all of the dynamic objects within your drawing. Run object commands, manage the settings for the drawing and drawing objects, group objects into new folders that you create, create reports, and manage survey data. The tool space can be toggled on and off from the ribbon, home tab, palettes panel, click the tool space button. In addition to turning the tool space on and off, the four tabs on the tool space can be turned on and off as well. Here you have a button for the prospector tab, the settings tab, the survey tab, and the toolbox tab. The tool space can be undocked, resized, and it can float around on or off your computer monitor. If you have two monitors, you can place the tool space on monitor one while working with the program on monitor two if you like, which gives you more drawing space. Start by looking at the Prospector tab. The Prospector shows you all of the dynamic objects that are within the current drawing. These include points, point groups, point clouds, surfaces, alignments, and sites, which can include alignments, feature lines, grading groups, and parcels. There are also catchments, pipe networks, pressure networks, corridors, assemblies and their subassemblies, intersections, survey data, and view frame groups. The Prospector also includes access to data shortcuts, which allows for data sharing within the project between different drawings. This is very similar to XREFing, but with data. You can right-click any of these objects within the Prospector to access additional commands available for each object. You can also set the Prospector tab to either be only in the Active Drawing view or in the Master view. The Active Drawing view only shows what is current in this one drawing. When you change the setting to Master View, any other drawings that are open can be seen and accessed as well, and you can access the template files from the location that your application options are pointing to. Each dynamic object is allocated a collection, which is a group of related objects. If there are any objects present in the drawing, they will be listed below their respective collections. At the bottom of the Prospector tab is a preview area for items within the collections. You can also see a preview of an object in the bottom prospector preview. While in these collections, you may see different icons. These icons carry over into the settings tab, but for now, stay in the prospector tab. First is the pencil with a red circle and slash. This indicates that the object is locked for editing, which means that you cannot edit this object. Consider it locked until this icon changes. Next is the upper corner chevron. The chevron indicates that the object is referenced by another object in the drawing. In the Settings tab, this would indicate that the style is currently in use somewhere in your drawing. Next is the blue arrow, which indicates that the object is being referenced from another drawing through a data shortcut or vault reference. Then there is the exclamation home plate. This indicates that the object is out of date and needs to be rebuilt or the object is violating specified design standards. Get to know these symbols as they are very informative when it comes to troubleshooting your drawing and why it may be acting like it is. Within each collection, you can create a folder to store objects in. Simply right-click and select Create Folder. This option carries over onto the Settings tab as well. The Settings tab of the Toolspace is exactly what it sounds like. This is where you configure how the software operates and how objects are displayed, how they behave, and how they are printed within your drawing. Each collection has its own set of object styles, label styles, command settings, and related controls. Changes to settings affect all lower items in the tree. On the settings tab, right-click the drawing name. Here you have options to edit the drawing settings. Change the label style defaults for the entire drawing. Set the land XML settings and set the table tag numbering for the entire drawing. The survey tab of the tool space allows you to configure and manage external survey observation databases. This is where you will import raw survey data from your data collector to bring it into Civil 3D. You can also manage and create survey databases, which is where networks, survey point groups, and figure groups are stored. Linework code sets deal directly with reading your fieldbook file or point file and interpreting how to understand the terminology in those files. The figure prefix database is where all the linework used during the import process will be stored. 
There is also the Equipment Database, which deals with translating data in the Survey Database into a usable format for a total station of any variety. You must designate these based on the requirements of your company's total station. Lastly, the Toolbox tab includes the Reports Manager, in addition to other add-on utilities that may be installed along with Civil 3D. In the Reports Manager, you can run stakeout reports that can be exported to a web browser for easy sharing. There are also reports for area, meets and bounds, surveyor certificates, slope staking, point lists, pipes and structures, and much more. Below the Reports Manager is the Miscellaneous Utilities area. Here you can import KC projects, export to KML, and more. As you can see, the tool space is where all the live dynamic data is stored in Civil 3D. This is the heart of the program, and you'll be using it constantly, so take plenty of time to become familiar with it and its functions.